on bar 52, let's go on. <laughs> And here it's a little tricky to keep uh, playing on the G string, but um, uh, you can take a little time getting to that A. And again, more on the E and less on the B. So there is a, an inflection, a heaviness to the E that we don't have on the B. Um, and then here the second phrase, uh, same thing, an octave higher. Uh, again, this timbre that I'm talking about, you have a more airy sound. It's not as guttural as we had here. Here we have um, uh, I don't know if you can hear that difference in color. Uh, but it's very important, in my opinion. Uh, again, there's a long line, and you want to start with a, a fairly narrow vibrato on the C sharp. And build your phrase towards the A. Uh, we build it not only with dynamic, again, but with um, amplitude and a speed of vibrato. Going towards the A, the height of this uh, phrase is the A. Uh. And you also want to think of the long line and not... Uh. So this is very beaty. Uh, you don't want to play this. Uh. You want to think of the long, long line. Um. Uh, and one more example of uh, relaxing your vibrato. We're going from the D and relaxing your vibrato towards the C sharp. Um, this is, uh, you will forgive me for repeating myself so many times, I just think this is such an important aspect of playing that so many of us uh, did not really train thinking about uh, this and we should. And uh, next bar, bar 56, so we have a statement that perhaps you can play simply. And here, maybe a little playful. Um, it will be a pity to play those exactly the same, I think. That's a little boring, uh, I hope you agree. Um, so you can change it however you see fit, but uh, please don't play them the same. Um, and then... And here we have uh, four or five A's. And one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's also not play all those A's the same. Um, I th you will agree that um, the phrase goes to the last A. And We can smile a little bit after being serious for the first half of this phrase. And here, smile. Um, uh, try to physically smile, it might help you uh, play this better, I think. Uh, it's such a difficult concerto that we forget. Uh, there's also some humor, a lot of humor, uh, in Haydn's works. Then we have uh, places where you can use um, differences in, in uh, dynamics to create echo effects. Uh, and these differences can be created uh, not only by uh, different dynamics, you can change your slurs, um, you can change which notes you bring out. Uh, uh, let me give you an example of a place, a very clear place you can definitely uh, use many different techniques to uh, vary how you present a little motif, a simple motif. So, um, looking at bar 64. So we have uh, the C sharp D E, repeats just twice here. Um, but let's not repeat the same thing exactly. Um, let me show you a few ways you can change. Uh, one would be uh, by doing an echo, very simple. Uh, 
one would be doing more. Perhaps you want to grow. <laughs> Perhaps you can sit on one of the notes more uh, the second time. Uh, so. so as you notice, I sat more on the D in the second group, in the second beat. So. There's really uh, endless possibilities, uh, and you have to find uh, something that fits you. Coming into bar uh, 68 and 69, uh, we're going to the upper stratospheres and uh, courage. Um. So that's how I practice it, just double stops. Um, I don't have a big hand, uh, but this is about uh, stretching and uh, working on your flexibility, I think. Uh, so don't be shy and really dig into the string. If you're afraid of playing out of tune, uh, your audience will see that you're chickening out. So. Of us shy away from the higher positions. I think if anything, this is a place to go closer to the bridge and get a good healthy sound up there. I love the theme in bar 71. It's just so beautiful. Um, use full sound here again. <laughs> You can hear both uh, voices equally well. Uh, we have. That's a lower voice, and obviously the, the upper voice. So together. Two cellists are playing uh, together. Um, maybe play with it a little bit. This is kind of a variation on on that theme. And then back in tempo in bar 74. Look at the uh, phrase in bar 98. Whichever slurs you choose, uh, try to vibrate on those uh, last uh, 16th notes. Um, the G F sharp. And again, it's not a very wide vibrato. It's a very narrow vibrato that comes to uh, make the sound alive and also relax your left hand. Uh, and here, we relax at the end of this uh, phrase. It is great if you have a lot of energy. It certainly is better than being lethargic, uh, but uh, if you play with a lot of passion all the time, uh, your audience will get tired of hearing your intense sound. So uh, it is very important to find places to relax. Um, I have the tendency to also play uh, with, with passion and, and with uh, uh, intense vibrato. And uh, it took me a lot of years to actually find the relaxation as well. And here uh, I show you a few spots where you can do that as well. Uh, if you are uh, by nature uh, very relaxed, uh, you might not need this. You will have to find your places to be a little more intense. Um, <clears throat> and here we can start. You can start Misterioso. <laughs> you can bring the, the lower voice. comes as a surprise. Uh, I think it should come as a surprise. Uh, one 
one place that has tricky fingerings that I thought to share with you. You might want to try them here. So, so I start on the first finger on the C string. One, three, one, thumb. string keeping my thumb as an encore uh, it helps to fill the position here in the second uh, sequence uh, I play in the first position uh, and again uh, this is uh, bar 110 I again use the C string. Uh, sometimes those passages are more kind of keyboardish, and uh, we don't want to struggle with a lot of um, changes in position. Uh, that makes it very easy sounding. And it is easy after you practice it for about 100 hours. To show you one more place uh, to create contrast and interest, um, bars uh, 102, 103, and 104, 5. Um, after this surprise chord, <laughs> this is all uh, out and dramatic and strong. Uh, and here you can abruptly change your mood. Uh, This is a very nice contrast. I'm not going to get into the cadenza. I use part of Gendron's cadenza and a part of an old teacher of mine. If you are talented and uh, courageous, I would highly encourage you writing your own cadenza. Take some practice, but see where it leads you. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.